Good evening, everybody. Welcome back. FSP Racing Friday Night Winston Cup from historic North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. I'm your host, Sean Reap. And in the booth, as always, the man, the myth, the monster, it's Milt Winter Jr. Let's get it on! <laughs> How you doing, Milty? Okie dokie. Just flew in. Boy, my arms are tired. Can't say stuff like that when I don't have the multi counter button in, within reach. Oh. <laughs> That's a dad joke and a miltism all in one there. Uh, but you gotta be careful with that one because it's an antique. Well, as noted, we, we've got short track in here uh, 0.63 mile oval, uh, classic NASCAR track that is sadly rotting away in the, uh, in the forest of North Carolina. But. Still alive and well here in perpetual 1988 Winston Cup Series. And on the pole tonight, you got the 109 of Rick Bisconner with almost a 21 flat. Now, it tells you how fast they're going around a uh, this 0.63 mile track. It's probably just a little bit slower than Bristol around there. Now, Will Farmer on the outside pole. Strong qualifying run, and he did not feel very confident in practice, so he clearly found something for qualifying. Good effort there by the 95. The McQueen team. And Mark DeRocket descends a puts car 3, P3. And mm, he's got to be one to watch. He's real good everywhere. And uh, you know he's got that classic Dale Earnhardt Wrangler 3 going tonight. Should look good going around this track. Billy Arbro uh, back in action with the, the number 54 car in the fourth spot. Matt Watkins, 30. Yeah, not 35th. Matt Watkins, 5th in the 35. Dennis Chambers rolls on in the 10 car, 6th spot. Diamond Dave Simons, 7th. Series admin Ryan Johnson starts 8th. Dan Irvine and Bob Dixon round out your top 10. So, Milty, have you ever raced this track? I don't think I have uh, turned any laps here. Don't have any first-hand experience with it. Yeah, it was, I think it was back in the day, though. Uh, so my memory, you know, last five minutes, maybe, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't get the chance to run it on uh, on Tuesday night. I should have done it because because I don't have a frame of reference around here. I will tell you, I was talking to Will Farmer uh, before he went out and turned that near-pole qualifying run. said it was... It was real loose getting in, and if you tried to step on the brakes, it would break looser. So uh, I suggested he start trail braking, keeping a little bit of throttle down while he you know, rode the brake into the corner. And I guess that seems to have worked for him, and maybe that's that's what we'll see more of tonight. But I expect we'll see a few different approaches, probably some early lifters and, and some late trail breakers, which always makes for interesting passing opportunities and you know, opportunities to get into each other. As again, it's a short track. And fuel mileage also. Yeah, fuel mileage. Is an odd odd size track. Not sure exactly what the window's gonna be around here. I mean if it's anything like Martinsville and the trucks last night, this is probably a one stop race, right? Because uh, hundred and sixty laps. Mm, it's doable. If if you get, you know, the eighty laps we were seeing last night in Martinsville. And as far as rounding out your field here, you got the 51 of Dave Jandry. Johnny Doucette, the Canadian in the 58, followed by his countryman Dan Jones in the 007, starting 13th. Power Jeff Havoc, 101, starts 14th. Big Cactus Steve Weber in the 83, 15th. Pops Margison, Ken Hansen, Sam Young, Ed Finley, rounding out your top 21 there. Hey, Barrett McKay checking in in the chat. How you doing, Barrett? As far as other actual starters, you got Bill Farmer, Ed Feller, and Chet Barkin rounding out your field tonight. What I'm seeing is some, looks like some real close pit stalls. So I think pit stall, uh, pit action is going to, going to be, uh, going down execution. And just as you said caution. that, yeah, just as you said that you saw a real hot pit entry practice there by the 109 car, Rick Sconner, your pole setter. Uh, I don't think he's quite keeping to the speed limit there down pit road. Probably coming around for another. 
Probably coming around for another go at that pit entry. Wow, that was almost uh, uh, what we used to call back in the day a GP, which was get driver that raced at FSB driver years ago. Gary Parkhurst uh, impaled himself uh, epically in a <laughs> in a uh, wall like that, and he almost uh, so that became a GP. You know, you know, you've messed up gloriously when it becomes basically a meme in the league. Our, our, our uh, league promoter Sam Young, the big boss man. You know, when I uh, when someone lands in the in the river in Pigs Creek, I call it pulling a Sammy because he did that rather spectacularly once. And I know what you're getting at there. And you'll see in celebration, uh, late Halloween festive touch. There we got the mystery machine as our pace car tonight. Here we go, Shaggy Scooby. Start your engine. What I want to know is where's Daphne at? <laughs> that's, mm, that's one of I the think lots of people want to know where. Chick <laughs> ever I think a lot of people don't know. Yeah, want to know where where Daphne is. So I'll take Velma. Give me the nerdy girl. Yeah, she, you can bang. Alright, and we are off the grid here. We're not off the grid. Rolling. Man, that... <laughs> that pace truck's really flying, too. I think they saw a ghost. Well, th this is a new one for a while, so there, there could be some hidden... Uh, things Green that happen in here air. that we don't know about. Yeah, the field is cleanly through turns one and two. Yeah, we didn't make our projection predictions, projections, whatever. Uh, I'm taking Desenza. I don't know about you. Yeah, this is a nice track for Mark. But uh, I gotta go with Matt Watkins here. Yeah, it's hard to bet against either one of those guys, so we are we're bunting on, on our selections tonight, folks. That's both of us taking the taking the easy route. Ooh, Short Will Farmer tracks. fallen backwards already, and he was dead sideways there next to Dennis Chambers. Looks like he finds a spot in behind the 10 car and tries tries to get that Rusty's number 95 McQueen machine back Ka -ching -ka. under control. Well, Barrett's obviously, uh, uh, Barrett's pick tonight is the 95. Go. Oh. Man, that would be a popular win. Uh, well, you, you know, obviously what you see here is uh, guys getting uh, single file. Uh, we'll have to see if that outline, outside line develops. Ooh, Dave Simons in the 02 car caught some wall off turn four, it looks like. He's okay, but scuffed up the right side a little bit. It's a sh short track, so... Can take a little damage and not lose arrow, but it's all about that right front tire uh, taking care of it. Be very flat, a little bit like uh, the old homestead. We've gone board with uh, Dennis Chambers here. Let's see, so I'll uh, put the information bar up so you can see the speeds we're carrying around here. About 120 into the straightaways until it brings it down to about 92. Dave Simons is struggling here. That car yeah. is really tight. Yeah, he was in the wall not too long ago. Okay, so we topped out 123 at the end of the back stretch. Down again to 91. A lot of time off throttle here. A little faster that time. Cars are working in now, so. We'll try to see if we can just lift and roll and save fuel. And also get the car to turn without getting that right front too hot. 
and the L2 just can't keep the car down on the bottom there. Might want to make a change maybe on the pit stop uh, with his uh, steering settings a little bit. Yeah, these are fixed setups here at FSB, but one of the things you can change are your wheel settings. Um, yeah. Personally, I always run 100% linearity, so I'm kind of stuck on that. But some people, uh, some people's wheels respond to those a little different than others. Looks like the cameras are really tight here, the TV1 and TV2. There's going to be a lot of spectator cam tonight. Jet Barkin uh, getting lapped by the field there. Definitely, uh, now he's stuck in, on the outside there. He's... And he gets oh, the and wall he hits hard the wall. right in front of Dan Irvine. A lot of it's managing that steering ratio, too. Yeah, that's something you can set in practice and qualifying, happy hour, etc. Um, yeah, before you hit the track, but once you're on, there's there's no setup options yeah. you can change. Yeah. One thing you can do is you can turn driving aids on, though. Um, I've done that. That generally when, makes you tighter. Generally makes you tighter, and uh, but what I find that more useful on is 1.5 milers and places like Michigan, California. If you take some rear end damage, and it can help you out. Yeah, get Yo, that link in the house, and we're getting more slow showing up. Got a pack separated there, back to the 27 of Irvine. As they try to get by the O2 of Dave Simons. And we got. 51 of Dave Jandry and the 007 car of Dan Jones working on that aforementioned O2. Well, the Mario Brothers, uh, Luigi, he's all over it here. <laughs> he's keeping that car down and saving tires and not showing what he has yet, you know. But then He's there's got... Bill Yarbrough, who in the 54 is just a great short track driver. And he's really got that car just glued down to the bottom. When that speed shot you get there off of turn four, it looks like Matt Watkins was coming off in a four wheel drift. Let's look at it again this time by as you see Mario. Fire Mario is on the hood of this particular car. Doesn't it look like the cars are almost launching into... The oh, McQueen there, the 95 was dead sideways. It almost looked like they're coming off a ramp coming off turn four. Luigi. Looks like Ken Hansen caught a piece of wall that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's damage on the nine there. Oh, heavy damage on the rear and the side. And the left what side. To him? He's got. He's had a much bigger problem than that. But it stays green. Sometimes some of these tracks, especially short tracks, are fickle on whether the NASCAR throws the caution. Well, I'm gonna Parts try and... are okay. You got to spin out, I think. <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, track down what happened to Ken Hansen. It's like as of at least 10 laps ago, this car was already damaged. And the caution is out. Oh, there's a car around That's, in front of the leaders. Yeah, the Bojangles 05 machine oh, of Ed Fowler. How about Bill Farmer up there running well and not falling back? And, uh, you know, it's, obviously his qualifying run was no fluke. That car is definitely strong.
Well, you are not going to believe what didn't bring out the caution, folks. I got that queued up now. So this is all the way back on the first lap. This is where Ken Hansen took his damage from. He goes in there, gets a little tap from behind, almost saves it, gets a secondary tap, and then four cars all piled in together. Had the track blocked solid, and no caution. And again, that was all the way back on lap one. So just now... Well, I'm confused. Uh, yeah. Okay, Farmer was on the... Uh, just about to get lapped there. In fact, I think he did get lapped. So he's all the way back to 20th there. Yeah, Bill Farmer was one of the ones involved in that. Okay, and so this this caution was the 68 of Chet Barkin getting loose in front of Ed Fowler and Pops Margson. And then here comes the whole field again into a completely blocked track, almost piling in. Scary moment there for the leaders. Oh, bam! Okay, that... Ouch. And we have uh, Ed Fowler. Mr. Bo Jangles, ouch. Dennis Chambers picks up a lap lead on pit stops here. guys are still trying to get lined up here. Very confusing. Mark DeSinza going backwards. In the longest lines for a bunch of... For uh, the 80. Yeah, the... Uh... Finley. Uh, and uh, uh, Mark DeSinza got one, too. Yes, I'm, I'm seeing DeSen yeah, DeSinza and Ed Finley thrown up. Oh, Bill Farmer. Throwing up an EOLL for the uh, 06 car. Chet Barkin should be taking one, too, because I should think that that was his incident. He is on pit road now, so probably trying to get himself to the back of the field. And the lights so are So the off. 06 gets the lucky dog, so he was the uh, first car uh, lap down. Oh, good. So he'll get his lap back. That's what his end of longest line is all about. Because that's how we work it. You get an intentional penalty, and the lap is granted back by Ryan Johnson, your series admin, on the drop of the green flag. Again, lights are out atop the mystery machine. I think I see a roast! Folks, this is going to be an, a bottomless pit of miltisms. I should probably keep the mystery machine going forward. <laughs> We're Man, back I'm to so green. Man, I'm so confused trying to watch who's in what position here. That's the, the nature of short tracks and where you, where, when the caution comes out. Plus, yeah, when caution comes out and cars are tail end of lead lap or just getting lapped at the caution itself, it can cause some confusion. We only got, thing, uh, only thing worse cars. is when caution comes out during pit stops. We got lap cars mi mixed with... Uh, Ooh, Dan Lead Jones is... Oh, oh, man. Dan Jones almost lost it there, and he got split by the cars around him, and everybody got out okay. Rick Bisconner is your leader. Sideways. You know, Dan Jones, and then, again, the 007 is just hanging on for dear life, as I think he and everybody else are trying to get a handle on this, now this he's unique P4. track. I, I'm confused here. I think Simon's just uh, he either didn't pit or he just took right sides or something. Now your leader is Matt Watkins. And, you know, not being behind other cars, 
Starting to see the 35 take off a little bit here. Will Farmer and Simons here battling for second place. It was the best battle on the track right now. Side by side. As once again, as as you already noted. Oh, oh man, I boy. thought they were gonna get together there. <laughs> Look how sideways that 95 is off turn four. That seems that, to be that a real loose part is, of the track. That corner is uh, it tightens up big time for the inside guy, especially. Yeah, Matt Watkins is just getting smaller and smaller in the windshield of these guys. Well, they're battling. Here comes the other group. Ms. Ooh, Connor Farmer Ford. catches the wall. Oh. They're going to go three Ooh, wide into one. Dan Irvine thinks and better of that. Is out. Caution is out. Uh, not for that contact. we got to find it on the other. Oh, and the 09 is back around coming to the caution. Bob Dixon is around. There is a parking and lot on the back stretch like as they shit. get around. Was around two. Oh, oh, Raggy. These guys keep pitting. Well, as you noted, it was Tires Bob Dixon. Tires are an issue, obviously. Bob Dixon in the 43 and the 06 of Bill Farmer, who just got himself the lucky dog, uh, finds himself catching catching Bob Dixon as he was sliding, and that's where your caution comes from. It just happened to happen at exactly the same time as Will Farmer caught a piece of wall. Oh, boy. Great so job Will. by... Sorry. Hopefully Will didn't think that was his, because, you know, clearly that wasn't. Matt Watkins now leaves pit road and days in the lead. Great stop by Piscata there, and he might have beat the 0-2. Yarborough had to go around the 35, which he did a great job, but that slows you down. Two Sorry. seasoned veterans right there. Doing the best they can with no problems. Looks like Dog's gonna stay out and give himself a lap lead. Getting those Dave Marcus uh -oh. points. Bob Dixon's car didn't look like it took too much damage. He's coming in to get service and get whatever, whatever damage banged out. Yeah, might as well. Dennis Chambers back to 11. Yeah, we'll see where this all cycles out to as, as the cars that stayed out come to pit. Dennis had to go around the O2 and didn't quite get it as straight as Bill did, but fortunately the 35 was in front of him and got out already. Oh, and him, him and the, Mark DeSinza almost got into it leaving Pit Road as we saw earlier there. Will Farmer coming back down Pit Road for maybe a little more repairs and a top off. Lights are off.
if these guys now they're all lined up Let's see if they can not let the 35 get away green flag back in the air and chet barking very slow on the bottom of the track wonder if he's having those frame rate issues again we found out last week that that's what his issue was his computer kept dropping down to like single frames per second And he's got a beefy computer. Andrew in that 51 Lowenbrow car, what could have been, was it last week or? I'm not sure what you're getting at. Uh, uh, him starting out front and then getting in the wreck. I can't remember which race. That might have been Talladega. Yeah, which was last week. That yeah, car, uh, yeah, the Lowenbrow car. A little desaturated color there. Looks like it may have been left out in the sun for a bit, but it's fast tonight. Boy, there's a bunch of cars that want to get back here. Fast cars three car there. catches some wall there. And I was just about to talk about him. Oh, Jandry gets Oh, Jandry's loose. way loose there. Hangs on to it. Keeps it clean. That's going to let a bunch of cars that big, by. That, that opened the gates. gets by him. He brings the 10, the 3, and the 80 along with him. That Pontiac of Finley's is looking pretty strong. It sure is. He's had some good runs lately. Just can't put together the finish and the luck. Yeah, I might as well take the air on the nose, and this, he's just gapping these guys with ease here. I was gonna say I might as well take advantage of these extremely tight cameras and uh, get some close-ups of these cars we got going around here because there's some decent-looking rides out there. Right now we are focused on Matt oh, Watkins and Zeke. Oh, oh my goodness! Car upside down. Matt got a little damage and the car's still crashing. Bill Double Farmer already called the tow truck. Lost it. And hit the wall again, and he's done. Dan Jones done. Well, here's what happened. Uh, the 06 and the 101 kind of got together going into three right in front of poor Ken Hansen, who's hit everything. It looks like, wow, a little bit of a bocce ball shot there. Got, got Bill Farmer flipped on his lid. John Dog Palmer gets a piece. Oh, 2 27. Oh, man, the 3 and the 007 hit hard. Wow. Yeah, that funnel over there. Really, Dog uh, was just up. trying to go by, and because uh, he knew he was probably going to get hit from the rear, but he was just trying to putt by, couldn't get get around. That was real, very strange. What what happened to Dog there? Rick Castle in the house. So let's watch this from. <laughs> Let's watch this from uh, Mark DeSense's perspective and just see how the, the track blocked solid on him. Yeah, he got nowhere to go. Even Watkins got a little bit of damage there, but. When we're watching from his roof, much. we can see what he sees. Okay, there's a little, bit of, a little puff of smoke, but everybody's still going forward, so now he can see. Wow, actually. He could probably see even less than what we were there. Yeah, he's in the cockpit. Yeah, if we roof. back that up, he's not a roof rider like me, I bet. 
we'll see. Let's back it up a little further here. Ah. Wow, you cannot see anything until right there. Bam. Oh. Okay, now I see Damn. what happened to Dan Jones. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, Dan got clobbered because I mean. You could see, you could see what Mark could see there, and he couldn't see anything because of the the a post of his car and the way the wall is there, and that that tunnel that the walls make on both sides. Yeah, poor visibility led to cars piling in a long time after that wreck started. Yeah, thanks, Rick Castle, checking in. Not sure why you're not out here, though. Jeff Havoc uh, out of the race, also. Tough luck for Tower there. Yeah, a lot of cars took surprisingly hard hits for a short track there. Bob Dixon gets a lucky dog. Well, Mark descends a hit pretty hard, but his car looks okay. I don't know what kind of engine damage, if any, he took. That's what you worry about on those frontal impacts, is the engine damage. You know, puncture the radiator or what have you. And uh, that can take horsepower or even lead to a, an eventual engine failure, but once again, the mystery machine is off the track, and Matkins brings him back to green. We'll have to see if uh, that 35 is still as strong as it was before with a little bit of damage. I think but he should be okay. He didn't hit a wow, way loose off two, though. He was tank slapping that one. Oh, 68 Dead is out of shape and in the wall. Looks like we remain green. Watkins banging it there, but Ryan Johnson up to third place. Yeah, quietly moving his way up through the field tonight. Great job by our series admin. It's a battle of the, the Yellow Jackets there. Mm -hmm. As he got the Buffalo Wild Wings car of Ryan Johnson. And that Jim Buffalo Salad, number Wild 10. Wings. Uh, salad! Wow. <laughs> well... You can oh, see the healthy option that wins Sally there. Si uh, that Buffalo Wild Wings got sideways right there. Flipping on some grease. Wow, what a power slide by the 59 <laughs> there. Slipping on some grease. But as you see, the healthier option does win out in the end as Dennis Chambers has gotten around and has set sail. He's got his sights set on the 109 of Rick Pasconer. Will Farmer has creeped his way back up after... Oh, and he gets sideways. Trying to get around the 59, and they touch doors going down They're the front They're good. Street. They're good. This short track racing, boys. Son, he didn't bump you. He didn't nudge you. He didn't run into you. What he did was he rubbed you. And Robin is racing. racing. Ed Finley way up into the marbles. But hangs and power it's off the corner, but hits the wall. And he's still battling with Steve Weber, the big cactus. Yeah, Ed Finley looking strong in that number eighty fire chicken. And As I say that, he catches some wall. a gas. That's Scorpions, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm not terribly familiar with their back catalog. Brett out. Got... 
Got to descend after 13th. And Mark Descends. A lot of good runs from Johnny, man. Uh, oh, 80 car uh, loose right in front of Mark Descends. Oh, oh, they're Andy around hard in turn it. four. Johnny Descends gets down low and uh, along with that other group and gets through. Him and Pops Markson, they're trying to get into the top 10 here. If we see par for the course, we're going to see stops for tires every time. Seems to be the MO here. Like Scoob, are, are you going to like Pit or like what? <laughs> uh, we got queued up here. Again, the 80 car got loose. And number three of Mark Desenza just had nowhere to go. Oh, Will Farmer all over the back of the 54. The veteran, he might pay that favor back there, but once again, slides around the 35 and does a great job. That is so hard, folks. I know I keep harping on it, but when you got to go around, oh, the 10 and the 35, get into it. Just a little paint trade there. How's it going, buddy? Pretty good, but the 10 gets around the 35. What a great stop for Dennis Chambers. That was a fantastic pit stop for the 10 crew. Gets him out front, and man, that could be everything tonight. Francis Dittman, Bandit, checking in the YouTube chat. Good to see you, Bandit. 8,500 winner. Uh, me meanwhile, both Ed Finley and uh, three of Mark Desenza have retired. Uh, just, man, that Wrangler car, uh, there's a hole in those pants, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I jinxed them. The broadcaster jinx. Yeah, kill them! Oh, I hit the miltism button for the hole in the jeans bit. There it is. Okay. Apparently I didn't hit it hard enough. Cracked them. Damn near killed them. Ooh, the... Oh, my well, uh, behind. So we'll see uh, how the tent runs with air on his nose. He's been strong all night. That car is dialed in, and he's uh, stayed up front and missed the carnage, which is what you got to do in these races if, if you're fast enough, you know. Well, he's strong everywhere. Absolutely. And I think I'll hit the little little greenhouse and uh, the porta potty. Oh, wait, hold on, uh, Danica's in there. I gotta wait a minute. To... <laughs> Come on, girl, can you hurry up? All right, I'll be back. <laughs> there you see Dennis Chambers getting some, taking a selfie with the with the Scooby Doo gang, I guess. Run alongside the pace car. I wonder if he's watching and, and sees what we're doing here. Because on his end, he's going to see the probably the, the fault. Corvette pace car. And if you're wondering why I ditched that pace car, I got tired of the lights being glitched on it. Um, especially on the laptop, which is camera two, which I'm on right now. There, back to the main. Um, the lights would glitch out. They'd show black, or they'd just have polygons all over the place and so I've swapped it out and we're back to green with Dennis Chambers leading him to the flag Ooh, a little loose through one and two and yeah, we've been seeing that a lot out of guys as soon as they get up front on a restart for the first time they really hang it out off turn two but he's got good hands he holds on to it and Matt Watkins well, Matt's had a taste of the lead and he wants to get back up there 
But he may lose the spot to Rick Bisconner if he keeps sliding like that. Matt Watkins trying to keep up with the 10 there. Oh, on the outside, and there's a the pass. Biscotter, Billy Yarbrough. Yeah, Biscotter falling back into the clutches of the 54 car. Drops to fourth the, place. I bet you the 54 has more second places to the great Kevin Lewis. And this guy's a great short track driver. Patient. And I would not count out the 54 at all. You see the way he exits the corner, just smooth glass. Yeah, meanwhile, the 109 is just falling further and further back. As he surrenders another spot to McQueen in the 95. Of course, like you said about Dennis, uh, the 54 pretty much runs good everywhere, so... Lightning McQueen in, in fourth, running good. This, you know, we just saw the seen the progression of Will Farmer, and he's just really getting into a rhythm in this race. He can start stringing these together, and then uh, better watch out, folks. Well, as I had started to do before, we had a. Uh untimely caution before I was gonna take advantage of these these uh, cameras that I guess weren't actually set for the track which is why they're so tight when I'm on camera one and two and uh, take some nice close-up in action shots of all these paint schemes we got going around here at FSP they got up front I got that Jim salad number 10 Ford Thunderbolt Thunderbird Done up kind of looking like a, a late model stock car there, that black nose and the local sponsor. I believe that is why he did it that way. I think that's a local sponsor in, uh, in Vermont where he's from. And of course behind him we got the 35 Super Mario car of Matt Watkins. Very 1988 appropriate. 54 real tree Chevy of Billy Arbro, we were just talking about before. And of course, I'm the rest of these. I'm about to go back to the future. <laughs> yeah, the rest of these, number 95 McQueen machine. Kachinga. Yeah, that's actually Chick Hicks who says Kachinga. Chick Hicks. <laughs> The Buffalo Wild Wings ride of Brian Johnson, Buick there. Looks like about an 83, 84 Buick with all that chrome on the front and back. Buick! And the, uh, I believe the only Maserati in the field. The 109 of Rick Bisconer. My Maserati, STP. my Maserati. <laughs> Steve Weber's Star Motorcycles Camry. Oh boy, this is getting good at the front here. He slides up the track a little bit, go side by side. Watkins all over the back of Dennis Chambers in the 10. Oop, Dan Irvine slips by the 83 in the 27 Miller Buick. We'll get back to him there. We focus a little bit before on that low and brow, number 51. There's beer. Yeah, well, I have to wonder. I've never, never met a beer I didn't like. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can bet. I think your favorite types Caution are. Caution is out. Your favorite types are cold and free, right? 
Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> Caution is out. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. There's Dave Sands. Oh, and they're hitting each other uh, under caution. Going by Pops Marcus in there. Oh, uh, Dave Simons puts his Dodge uh, Magnum, I believe. Don't that see is. any damage on Pops. Let's see if uh, he was involved in that. He's flying down pit road in that O2 car. And the O2 has retired. Oh, Actually, Pops! Pops got loose in front of the O2, and uh, the O2 just gently got into him. As it wasn't real gently, but that's multiple uh, uh, alleys for that car, and he decided to park it. Yeah. And what a what a I shame! Don't, I don't think the damage should have been all that bad. Wasn't a hard leg, so. And then, I mean, he couldn't possibly be taking that as his own incident. Pop spun in front of him. But regardless, um, the O2 has retired. And we'll see again as he went flying down pit road here immediately after that. And yeah, just like that. No two of Dave Simons is gone. So we'll continue scrolling through these cars, getting nice close ups of them. Chet Barton's on pit road, that's why it's not changing. Chet Barkin in the 68 STP Kings 200th win scheme. That one is also a Buick, a Pontiac rather, I'm sorry, Pontiac. But that's the uh, the 84 Pontiac. Pops Margison in the Scotch Blue Ford Thunderbird. Ken Hansen in the battered, bruised, and beleaguered number nine Coors million dollar. Million Dollar Bill paint scheme there. The, the colors that Bill Elliott took to uh, the first Winston Million back in this time frame. Well, we tried to uh, uh, see if we could talk to uh, Dave, Dave Simons, Simons, but uh, no response so far. So uh, He may have just had a problem that he just had to get off. Yeah. Off the game quick, could have been completely unrelated to the uh, contact. Sometimes real life intervenes. Absolutely. I was racing a truck race on a Sunday morning and my wife had a stroke. So. I remember you telling me about that <laughs> one before. Obviously, I crashed it into the wall as fast as I could, and uh, fortunately, uh, we took care of business and she's still doing great. So, so there's the 43 STP. Oil treatment Pontiac of. Is that a Pontiac? Or is that a Dodge? I think that might be uh a... Yeah, it's a Dodge, okay. Looks a little bit more like a Chrysler or Baron to me, but. He put Dodge logos on it. Uh, you got the 09 on the hammer be a, Chevy. A, a Cordoba with Corinthian leather. <laughs> Reach Corinthian leather. Tattoo. Whatever the heck that is. And we're back to green. You're a little young for those commercials. Oh no, I, I remember them with Ricardo <laughs> Montalban. There you go. Yep. There's the Dennis Chambers out in the lead, and we got the lap car of Bob Marcus in there, trying to, er, you know, keep trying his to hang lap. on for that lucky dog. He's, you know, sideways, and Bill Gabriel's all over him. There's Both. smoke. There's smoke, there's fire. Apparently not. Again, John Dog Palmer in the 108 AMC. Here yeah, I think that's we kind of covered everybody that's still running there. 
Yeah, great opportunity to get these great paint jobs, you and uh, Ed Finley and a bunch of these guys. Fading, oh boy, Matt Watkins, Spears left, trying to avoid the 99, and 99 goes hard into the wall. That whole sequence of events obviously uh, uh, spooked Pops there, and that's a that's a hard leg. Oh, well, the 58 of Johnny Doucette is stopped on the back stretch. He's waiting for cars to go around and then get back going. I can see what happened there. I think maybe he's just rejoining. He pitted under caution. Oh, he must have had a penalty that he had to serve. Let's take a look at that on the scanner. Uh, and Wolf Farmer was disconnected and reconnected. Yeah, fortunately it happened under caution, so he only lost one lap. But he, uh, he does find himself a lap down. Two laps. At least two, three laps down, actually. Yeah, there is Johnny Doucette in the 58 yeah, that's Canadian Air Force car. Good, good uh, sportsmanship right there. Realized he was coming into a gaggle of cars and was already laps down. And uh, that's that's impressive right there. That's good. Keeping your cool and realizing and just trying to do the best you can there. We've seen nothing but that from uh, the 58 uh, since he's been here, which means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Pro racing here. Yeah, sometimes you got to recognize that, was, that there's, that there's was not. That's a smart move right there. Yeah, you got to recognize that there's not much you can do to, to dig out of the hole, so you just try and maintain. These guys that are laps down and beat up are still going at it, though, having fun and racing each other. So then you got Brian Lamb there uh, in the 09 car. I haven't talked Arm about him a lot tonight. Already, sitting, yeah, sitting comfortably in the top ten there. Meanwhile, this battle this is, is good, heating up. a good, solid race for him. Uh, he was joking around saying John Descent was taking the air off his spoiler. Uh, or not John Descent, uh, uh, Dave Simons. But uh, he's definitely just running his pace and keeping out of trouble thus far. See, the 54 and the 10 are going at it hot and heavy here for the lead. Rick Piscotter lets the 83 by. Getting in line and... Uh, oh, Matt Watkins sideways getting around the 68. That's... Man, that dude can drive sideways, but what will that do to the tires? We'll see, but... And he is still all over the 10. These guys are going at it. You'd have to say, from what we saw, when we saw the 35 out front, he pulled away. He's a little bit faster than the 10, I think. But getting around him's another story. Well, he's got to get and to that, him first. Uh, Matt's got to get around oh, I'm sorry, that's Brian Bill Johnson Yarbrough. first. That's, that, that's Yarbrough up there in another black car. 27 looking underneath Matt Watkins. Marking into the wall a little bit, and them catching them, that, that gives Ryan Johnson the spot as the 35 goes backwards. Now, Dan Irvine's taking a look at him. But Matt's able to get back in line. Now it's the 54 of Billy Arbro and uh, your leader going out of here. Bummer, Francis, man. I mean, I've been there, bro. Got to take care of priorities first. Man, Matt Watkins uh, either just doesn't have the handle on this track or, or has taken a little bit of damage. 
that's adversely affecting the car because he's moving backwards currently. He's fallen to the 27 of Dan Irvine and is still losing ground to him and may even face a challenge from the 51 of Dave Jandry soon. Well, I think that damage he got earlier uh, didn't show up on the short run, but plus he just kind of got out on the outside and uh, free trained a little bit there. Meanwhile, Whew. it's apparent the, the car in the lead definitely has the aero advantage. The far. 54 is breathing the sauce down his neck. Look at the. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at Billy Arbro all over the ten car. He's just looking for him, you know, to force an error or just find some way to get that run. He is ready to pounce either way. Very clean and uh, it's been in this bat position against all the great short track drivers throughout the years. Bill's been. At FSB a long time and ran the sh short track series back in the day. Wheelands. Uh, this is really up his alley and he knows how to follow and it's early three quarters or two thirds of the way through. It's but he's going to put that pressure on right now. And, uh, Dan Irvine takes the 27 Miller Buick around Ryan Johnson to take control of third place. And we've definitely settled into a groove here. And uh, hmm, are we going to see pit stops? I can't remember what lap they last pitted at. It's possible if we go green to the end, we're going to see some finally see some green flag pit stops here. Twenty-seven, Dan Irvine, teammate of Francis, he's rooting him on. Dan's been strong all night. He's and making he's that gap smaller. That gap is getting a little smaller, I think. Let's see, that time by... is 1.075. Now they got lap traffic they're coming up on. Each time you restart and you might get a little damage, might not. Bit of tires, whatever. It you gotta bring it again and sometimes you get a different feel and uh, these guys are so good and so close. A little bit of tire wear here or there, a couple slid corners, or maybe they're just trying to run a certain pace. Well, folks, the twenty seven is there. He closed that gap in a big hurry once he got close. Matt Watkins later in the run. He's got by the 59. Was he saving tires a little? Maybe. Can he make that run? Dave Jandry's still hot, hanging in there in sixth with that group. And Steve Weber, which is a great run on a short track for the 83, the big cactus. Like he's uh, got better as the race goes on, which is usually what he does. That's how he won a championship here at FSB. It's also usually what happens when we get to a track that not everybody is super familiar or comfortable on. The guys who make it this far in the race, they this race has served as an extended, intense practice session for them, and they find themselves running better at the end than they ever did in practice or qualifying any of that, or the beginning of the race for that matter. You see as they work through lap traffic here, 27 of Dan Irvine, biding his time, looking for that window, looking for 
way to pounce. It's possible he saved some tire too, like you were talking about Matt Watkins possibly doing. Yeah, he's looking to, to use it now. Bob Dixon, the 43, what could have been, it just really hasn't been his night tonight. Car still looks pretty good, but the speed's just not there. Yeah, he's been caught in several wrecks, and uh, I don't think he's the biggest fan of short tracks, which I completely identify with. Last night in the trucks was my own personal hell, Martinsville. That's a tough one. I want to put some of those furniture wedges underneath the outside of the track and put some darn banking in the place. And the 35 of Matt Watkins is closing down on this group. He is closing that ground down, so... Yeah, I believe you called it. He was saving some tire. But did he save for too long? Are we going to have to stop again? And what's he going to have left when he gets there? These are all the questions. Well, we know he, he can make it on fuel. They all can. Tires. And that's generally what he do is go into a save mode when that opportunity is available. And they are just hawking the 10 car. What a battle. That's my walk is, closes in a little bit. Dan Irvine, 21, 148, last lap. Folks, we've got uh, ourselves I'm sorry, a four uh, car uh, seven, battle. Five, 21, 7, 5, 5, and 21, 6. So Matt's getting a 10th every lap, and you can see it. It's about a car length. Dan Irvine tried to take a look up high and then couldn't quite complete that. Oh, <laughs> so close there in the entry to the corner. Well, you can see Bill is like a machine. He just, and so is Dennis Chambers, man. He is. And just so really... is Dan Irvine, and so is Matt Watkins. <laughs> so they're just really. Oh, he's got a nose. He's got a nose in there. Can he put the power down off four though? Come on, Bill. Yes, he can. Still about a half a car length, and he clears he's the ten. He's gonna bring the, the train with him. It's gonna be free, free train there. No, he's oh boy, that's close. And Watkins down on the inside. Get back in line now and try to save your tires a little bit. All right, so what's Billy Yarbrough, Yarbrough sorry, used up trying to get around the 10 of Dennis Chambers? What has the 27 saved, and has the 35 saved more? He went back in clean air and away from cars a little bit, but he did have to make a couple passes, that being the 35. He had to make a couple passes, and he was dead sideways a couple times, too. And that can make those tires angry early, and you're just never getting it back after you do that. These guys have battled a little, kind of took a breath. Okay, now what do we do here? Do we try to save a little bit? What are these other guys going to do? We got cars on pit road. Brian Lamb brings the 09 down. So you're seeing cars, uh, you know, not happy with drivers, not happy with their tires. When you're looking at lap times right now. Dennis Chambers, uh, Chambers on pit road. 21, so that's, yeah, they're going to stop again. I think they all are. That's going to bring out the hand of these guys. They're losing half a second a lap. Unless you can make it to the finish. 
So hey, there's Jordan, the 10 car. Jordan McGregor in the house. Jordan McGregor. There's another one we're missing there tonight. You're missing a heck of a battle, buddy. I bet you'd be right up there with him. Hopefully he's out there doing something with the real car. Alright, 10 car is down and away with less than 30 laps to go. Now Dan Irvine is... He took a couple laps breath there and now he's back on the tailpipe of the 54 and they got lap cars 54 heads for pit road Bill Yarbrough. Bill Yarbrough smokes into the pit road the veteran where is that commitment 27 line? is clutching this is about 27. fuel too then He is definitely clutching. Bear Armoral in his stall, smooth all night, executing flawless. Oh, he almost loses it off four, and here comes Matt Watkins. Four Matt times. Watkins takes advantage of that uh, that error by the 27. It's tough to clutch sometimes. Uh, he wants to break loose when you get back in it. Four tires for Bill. 27 down pit road. Great pit stop, nice and smooth and fast. And uh, he might have undercut these guys. Billy Arbor came Except out in front of the ten. And he still got in front of him, but Dennis is all over him, and he's got uh, warmer tires. All over again, looking down Dude. low. But can he get the power down off the corner? Like That's been the tough part all night. It. And he does. Bill did not fight that very hard, but he knew exactly his situation. Cold tires, and he's willing to follow. He knows he has a couple lap advantage on tire wear and fuel. But what does Matt Watkins have? Did he save enough? Is he is he really going to make it 30-some-odd laps more than anybody else? Well, we thought you know, fuel wasn't an issue from that point. I honestly had not been paying close enough attention. I uh, I, I failed in my, well, my race too, analyst so, duties. So guess what? what? We get these guys to, to excite the fans and... Show them what's really up. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean you always you're always telling me I'm I'm so smart and I'm no, I'm showing you what's really up. I, I I have no clue like the rest of you. I just pushed the buttons. So th <laughs> theoretically, it. you would think when things cycle out, these guys would be the leaders, Billy Yarborough and uh, Dennis Chambers in sixth and seventh. Yeah, if. If Ryan, um, they're excuse coming me. up in P2, on P two. Dave Janry, he's in save mode. Obviously, if he's staying out. Matt Watkins can't make it. Um, he's only hurting himself staying out at this point. The only thing I can think is maybe he's counting on a caution to trap these guys a lap down. Because uh, let's not forget that these guys aren't even in the lucky dog spot right now. Ken Hansen in fifth spot in the nine car is your lucky dog. They're saying I can't make it on tires and fuel. That's saying I can. So, and we've seen that so many times in his career. That's sure what it looks like. And so is Dave Jandry in P2. And Ryan Johnson, I mean, that dude can make fuel going around the track. I think he's got one of those those Air Force mid-air refueling systems in that car. Hanson damaged, uh, pushed in the rear with the gear, and look at this effort from the nine car. Johnny Doucette down pit road. Uh, 
Uh, meanwhile, look who's about to unlap themselves. Pops in the top ten, still battling. Is Connor P4? Is he on that? And definitely, we're seeing clutching from the 59 of Ryan Johnson at P3. And clutching around this track, he is clutching it big time. But he almost wrecked when he did it, so. Yeah, same thing we saw the 27 before, getting back in the clutch, he almost lost it. Andrew doesn't appear to be clutching. At least on the corner I watched him. Matt Watkins in the 22 nines, so he's slowing way down. But he's, he's only not clutching, last. but he's he's not clutching, but he's uh, he's just getting way out of it. Identical 22 265s the last two laps. That's way off the pace, unless you're leading and uh, planning on staying out. And with 12 laps to go, um, he's looking like he's really going to go for it. So Billy Arborough and Dan Irvine are 20 seconds back right now, and they're they're running 21 fours, 21 sixes. What? This three-way battle, they're all battling each other. So if they're making two seconds a lap or more on him, then yeah, they'll catch him again. If they can keep that pace up, they have four, at least uh, Yarborough, I watched him, definitely got four tires. That would make sense with that strategy. Oh! Contact with Bill in the 27, and that changes everything caution flag is out that really does oh man really changes everything <laughs> oh all right well it's time for the crew chief hat what you gonna do and matt Watkins, he has to pit his tires are absolutely destroyed he's got the lead there's no way he's holding it on a restart with those old tires dave jandry uh, what do you do, Dave? Uh, maybe you uh, stay out. Let's see what happens. Matt Watkins down pit road. Like you said, just going down pit road. 59 was clutching big time. They're on the lead lap now, so you might as well get four freshies. Who else is on the lead lap that's going to usurp them? Got to go down pit road. So here we have it, the 27 and the 10 running together, and here comes Yarborough. Trying to Four get around underneath, and wow. just got into the 27. <laughs> Four tires for the 35. Chambers, man, these guys are good, or what? 59 <laughs> got in. Big track position and four tires for him. Four tires for the 10. Four oh, tires this... for the 54, but he lost. Which he might as well have done anyway because he, he was in. Uh, well, he's got to take the, the weeds anyway. Yeah, yeah he's got to take the end of the longest line for the incident accountability rule. But uh, while this all gets sorted out, I'm going to take, uh, take my little break so I can be here for the finish and the setup of the post race so I'll be right back Milty yep uh, extended stay at the uh, Hilton for uh, 27 he gets four tires and they beat and bang on that thing what a great run for Dan Irvine there and uh I'm going to look back here because I didn't actually see it live, so you're not going to see that on your screen, but yeah, the bill definitely underneath him, and Dan not giving him any room either. 
So I don't know. You know, I'm not an admin there, so it's the broadcaster. That's definitely a racing incident they'll be looking at. I would say at that point, Bill was pretty much as low as he could be, and Dan was pretty low too, but... Look at it again. Yeah, wow. That's a hard one to call right there. I think as the outside driver, you need to understand that the inside guy is only going to have so much room. But, the, I mean, once you're committed to that line like the 27 was too, it's hard to veer from that. So I would call that a racing incident uh, as a fan, you know. And we restart again already. Ooh, I almost missed the green flag here. You did. And it's Matt Watkins right up against the wall. Well, I saw it. I was just still sitting down putting my headset back on. That caution might have been his best friend. Having the yeah. track position. And... I, I think they were coming for him. Now he's got nothing to do but just blow him away. And the thing about this guy is he, he I've raced against him for years. Uh, he's won everything. He is the GOAT. And the caution is out. out. That's going to end it right gonna there. That's going to do it right there. Matt Watkins, your point leader, is about to expand on that. It's Connor up to second there. Great perseverance run. And here is what brings out your final uh, race ending caution. John the Dog Palmer in the 108. Just gets loose off the corner right in front of the 9. Hammered hard to the inside wall. Ken, poor, poor Ken Hansen. Just can't catch a break tonight. That car. Oh, you're a magnet. You're a magnet. <laughs> Seriously. He gets the Magnet Award for the night, but uh, he, he brings the car home in sixth place anyway. I think Despite Dave Janry, severe damage. I think Dave Janry would have... He was looking really good, and... <laughs> these, uh, I saw Ryan try to... Uh, Johnson tried to clutch, and he almost wrecked. And that was not some easy deal, and to save a whole lot of fuel, uh, you would have had to... Uh, yeah, cars going down pit road. Okay, there you have it, your, your winner, Matt Watkins, with the the fuel strategy that turned into a timely caution strategy. And who knows, maybe the timely caution was a strategy all along. I don't know, Reggie, that was crazy. As men, does that... Uh... A mystery machine haul ass, man. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> and Matt Walker smoking them like he's got them. What kind of what, what kind of suspension they got in that van? Now that's how you do a burnout, folks. Well, he's got that some is, practice at it. <laughs> that is a full-on smoke show. All righty, uh, that is going to do it here from North Wilkesboro. Again, your winner, Matt Watkins. Second place, Rick Visconner. Nice, uh, 
nice late, uh, nice strategy there to, to persevere, hang on for a second spot. And Ryan Johnson, again, another one of your fuel strategy guys, comes home third. And Dennis Chambers, Billy Arborough, they were the class of the field uh, for a while there, it looked like, but circumstances caught them out, and uh, they still bring it home in the top five. Still good runs for those guys, but not what they were looking for, probably. Well, I'll step away for a second, and then we'll grab them guys and bring them up to the booth here. Huh? Awesome. So while Milty goes and grabs our finishers, I'll just run through the rest of the field best I can here before the server kicks me out. Uh, again, Dennis Chambers fourth, Billy Arbro fifth, Ken Hansen <laughs> battered, bruised, probably a little bloody inside that cockpit. Those were some hard hits. He puts the uh, the million dollar bill cores, Melling Thunderbird, P6, still on the lead lap. Um, that that's a gritty points racing night right there. Steve Weber, your big cactus, the 83 car is seventh. Dave Jandry, he looked like he might have had something for him for a while, but just got caught off sequence. Ends up uh, eighth spot, 51 car, one lap down. Pops Margeson. Man, he, he got, got in some bad situations. Uh, looked like he wasn't having a good time out there, but still brings it home in the top 10, ninth spot. And Brian Lamb rounds out your top 10. Dan Irvine, 11th. Uh, we just kicked. All right. So, while my. Partner Milty's grabbing our podium finishers here. I see our big boss series promoter, league promoter, sorry. Sam Young has quietly slipped into the broadcast booth. How are you doing, very, Sammy? Very, very quietly tonight because I had sound issues, of course. Of course, because I would have loved to race tonight. But it was a great show, Sean. I, what a great race. Um, I believe Rick Biscanner has already taken off, which is disappointing because he was number three, I believe. He was but, second, um, yeah. Yeah, and second, was... and that's right. Ryan Johnson was third, so that was a great race. I mean, unbelievable. I think Matt Watkins was going to have enough fuel to do it, and I think he was going to be such an ending there with having uh, him uh, being two seconds slower each lap. It was going to come up. It was going to come down to the last lap. He was about two seconds slower with about twenty laps to go, and yeah, uh, that was. <laughs> I think I think it was a go for broke move. I think he thought that uh, he was either going to catch the caution penalty. or outrun him. Oh, sorry. Run, run. Sorry, Ryan. You're all right. Oh, <laughs> and we have our podium finishers uh, rounded up here by Milty. Or two of them, at least. Uh, Ryan, you were, you were going for the fuel. Um, I, was, I was telling everybody, you, you got one of those mid-air refueling kits, and you make fuel as <laughs> yeah. you go along. Could you make it? Well, I, I could have made it, and uh, it was funny he just said that, because Isaac's home. He's sitting his ride to me last 20 laps here and i was like what are the sound on the broadcast because i i didn't have my my right ear muff off had the phone you know on the broadcast he's like he, he said ryan can make fuel that's what he told me so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, we, that, we, that made we, me feel good because well, yeah i am that guy that is the fuel mileage officer so <laughs> we saw you clutch it once and almost uh, lose it. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you it, almost it, lost the clutching and 27 Dan Irvine almost lost it clutching. Yeah, it was hard. Uh, I've been there. Either going downhill on the front stretch or uphill on the back stretch, it, it was kind of tricky. So, But, yeah, I was going to be able to make it. Sweet. Well, heck of a run there. You just kind of you st strategized, to quote an ex-president, uh, your way into a, a podium <laughs> finish there. <laughs> Strategery. Strategery yeah. on the fuel. <laughs> a great job, Ryan, and thanks again for all you do, admitting these Friday night races. I just want to say, I this is the first time this season been in the booth, and I'm glad is to it? be here. So, yep, yeah, I well, it's heck. been it, it's been a long time, so I'm I'm happy. Well, you need to make a habit. Well, of that, we man. can't find Rick Biscotter. Must have. Uh, he yeah, Rick was going to had sponsor uh, obligations. Had to jump in the uh, helicopter uh, or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think <laughs> Got into the uh, uh, motorhome and closed the door there. <laughs> so we do have our, our winner and uh, other, other fuel producer under under motion there, uh, Matt Watkins. Could you make it to the finish? Uh, fuel, absolutely. Tire, probably not. Um, I tied my red with like 14 to go, so I'll <laughs> <with> the blue. 
Wow. So, okay, so uh, we th- we thought yeah, you were lucky yeah, with that caution. I was actually right. <laughs> so I'm gonna guess your your gambit there was to hope for the timely caution that you ended up getting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know like how quick the tire blows on this track. I mean, some tires, some tracks you go like 15, 20 laps with a red tire and live, and stop and go like five. So. I was uh I was gonna ride it till it blew, till it blew. Yeah. And, um, wow. Yeah. Well, I get a red tire and I want to be in the pits I, last lap. I hear you. I backed off a little bit before you did, Matt, because I knew that was coming. It, it was a it was a toss up, but I thought, yep, yeah, I'm gonna make it. it. It was gonna be tight. Now I gotta ask, is this your first trip back into in, into the booth uh, as a winner, winner, Matt? Yes, I. Uh, I was a winner. I, really. Yeah, it's been He's a long the points, time. But... <laughs> As a winner, I think this okay. is okay. With that qualification, right. possibly okay. <laughs> points are updated too, by the way. Guys. All right, I'll refresh that here on the screen. And again, there is, yeah, Matt Watkins, twenty-seven points up over Dennis Chambers. Rick Misconner moves up a spot to third, uh, thirty-three points back. Steve Weber and Ryan Johnson jumps five spots with that. Uh, well, with Matt, that great points night there. Thank you. Matt, Matt uh, uh, Dennis Chambers was really strong early. It seemed like whichever one of you got out in the front even had the, the advantage. Then you got uh, caught up in that uh, the cars around there. How much damage did you get when uh, you breezed up against those guys? I didn't get any damage. Got got close. I um, almost... Unfortunately, I almost wiped Chet out there. I got in too high and almost hit him, and then almost spun into Ryan. Right. So I felt very fortunate I didn't wreck anyone. But uh, definitely a shout out to Ryan Uh-oh. for third. Um, he had Cute. speed way past fuel. I mean, he blew by me on the track. So um, good job to him. Good job to Rick. Those guys were good all night. So uh, good to see him finish good. Now, did the damage you got caught up in at least one wreck there when the track closed up on you? Was that affecting you at all, or is this place short enough that that the damage was really no factor? Um, no, I didn't get any damage somehow. I, I, I scraped along the wall and just barely missed those guys, and um, did, very fortunate not to get any damage. <laughs> well, lucky there, then. Was, there were, there were yes. several uh, other guys there. It just wasn't their night, but uh, strong cars, which made for great racing. You guys passed and uh, passed on the pits. Uh, uh, you, just the way everything. things worked out worked uh, great for you. Bill uh, Yarbrough had to go around you every time, which just he did a great job uh, getting around you. But just that little bit, you, you were able to manage that track position every time. Yeah, I tried to stop every possible way in my pit box, and I just I tried to like you know leave Dennis enough room behind me and. Um, that pit road was tough. <laughs> it was so tight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ryan, you up. touched on something there. You said uphill one way and downhill the other. Is this track slanted? I haven't run on it before. Yeah, you're downhill going down the front stretch and uphill going down the back stretch. So when you clutch, especially more so, well, it did. I'll take that back. Going into one, it's tricky because you're downhill, and when you hit the clutch, it's kind of wonky. And then as you topped turn three, when you clutch. You're kind of go, kind of going up over a hill. I don't know. That's just me. I'm not the greatest ever. So um, <laughs> when you do clutch, it kind of throws it kind of wonky. So it's really hard to clutch here. Um, we got a new milk wonky. Hey, yeah, uh, wonky. Guess, guess who's in the booth and had his mic open for a bit, and that was Bill Yarbrough. Hi, Bill. Bill. What's up, Bill? Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. What, what great run there. Just run the timing there, didn't work bro. out. Great run, Bill. Awesome race. Yeah. Got myself in the foot, though. Yeah, you, you know that incident was. Uh, first no, God, it was close. It was. Close. That was. Close, was yeah. close. I mean, I don't think you I could mean, have got any tighter there, Matt. Uh, that, the yeah, yeah, I don't know what you could have done, but uh, just tight, close racing. It was, it was fun to watch. Just good hard racing, and uh, it just sucked for both of you guys. And I know you feel terrible, and uh, I, I thank you for showing up, and uh, also Dan Irvine. You know. Uh, just good hard racing and gr- what a great show man awesome show uh, yeah, yeah bill i mean you, it was yeah it was tough to end it that way but you see that that dennis couldn't even get around these guys on that restart anyway so um yeah you, you didn't necessarily cost yourself any you know a lot many positions but put on a heck of a show we were on you guys most of that almost that entire run there as you guys were just inches apart it seemed 
That was a great <laughs> track. Great, great racing. Awesome. Good stuff you, at a, you at a classic love track. That stuff, huh, Bill? I mean, I know how much you love Star Trek racing, and uh, and uh, earlier in the race there, it was a uh, great pass. Uh, it was just a lot of good passing, and uh, it made it easy for us, you know, because there was a <laughs> lot of action out there on the track. <laughs> Absolutely. So again, thanks everybody for for joining us up here in the in the booth for the post race show. Again, your podium finishers Ryan Johnson and the absent Rick Bisconner, uh, Bill Yarbrough helping put on the show tonight there with, some, with a great run along with Will Farmer. I see you snuck in there. You were looking strong too at at, at times. And thanks, of course, to the Farmer Brothers Contracting. Bill Farmer putting up the hardware that we're chasing here in the Winston Cup Series. Just four more races after this, right, guys? That's it. Yeah, four more to go. This was race eight of the season. Oh, plus oh, we have plus two makeups. That's oh, right. We have two makeups. Yep, yeah, we got six races date. left to go. We're um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Matt Watkins is looking like the early favorite to pick up the, uh, the Winston Cup here. Again, that hardware put up by the by Farmer Bros Contracting. Thanks, as always, to Ryan Johnson, our series admin, Sam Young, league promoter, owner, and boss, which he hates to be called, but I get to call it to him right here. He's the boss. Uh, He's the boss. <laughs> thanks, guys. And of course, thanks, my partner, Milt Mitchell Jr. Couldn't do it without you, buddy. And everybody for joining us out there in YouTube land for FSB Racing Live. I'm Sean Reap saying good night.